Pictures like memories are part of our legacy. They're a great way to reminisce. But before the advent of camera and all it heralded, portrait painting were the most effective means in recording images of people. From oil on canvas to color on silk and ink on paper, portraits are like time capsules. They offer us clues about people and their lives in the past. So to explore this ancient art form, we now embark on a journey into portraits, from past to present and across different cultures. The Tsinghua University Art Museum in Northwest Beijing was founded in 2016. It houses a rich collection of old artworks. And today, we're being given a private viewing of some of its Qing Dynasty portraits. What we are looking at is actually a historical character. This character is called Su Wu. Su Wu Muyang is a very famous Chinese story. Su Wu was a Chinese diplomat during the Western Han Dynasty. During a mission into the foreign territory, he was captured, detained, and later exiled. He was forced to herd the rams for years before being able to go back to his own homeland. Despite suffering many hardships, he remained faithful to his mission and home country. His story has since been regarded as the epitome of faithful service, making Su a popular subject in Chinese art. I'm curious why, of all the paintings depicting Su Wu as a shepherd, the work by Ren Buonian has become especially famous. Because in his generation, it's, and especially his style of the portraiture is very, you know, how to say, distinctive in a way, because he have a very unique way of using the lines. When you look at the lines on his rope, it's like painting a rock. Very hard and straight confirmed lines to create, you know, an old man covering the rope is like covering within the rock. And when you look at the face, it's actually, uh, in comparison, it's quite detailed. But look at the sheep. It's very expressive. Yeah, it's very expressive. That's his style. Chinese portraitures focus on presenting the inner spirit of their subjects rather than aiming for a realistic depiction. Artists work with lines and space to make the form show the subject's personality and demeanor. In this painting, Kings of great distinctions were depicted as being taller and bigger than their true selves, while less respected monarchs looked dispirited and unfriendly. The production process of Chinese portraits also varied in contrast to the West. Chinese artists did not sit with their canvas in front of their subject. They study them and work from memory based on their impressions of their clients. This approach helped artists present portraits that brought about the subject's inner character rather than highlighting an outward likeness. Now, portrait albums were a rare thing in ancient China. Yet from the few relics that are available, we see one family's attempts to record their ideal self-image. In addition to portraits of historical figures and family portraits, Chinese ancestral portraits form another important painting category. What can you tell us about this particular portrait when we compare it to portraits in the West? For the Western portraiture is, for example, I'm a painter, I paint you as a sitter, so you paint you know, face to face for a period of time. But this particular portraiture for the Chinese way, especially in Qing Dynasty and Ming Dynasty, was for to worship the ancestors. Most of the portraiture actually not painted during the, the sitter was alive. The main difference is that the Chinese 
ancestors' portraiture are using two-dimensional technique. So it's not like the Westerns you're using 3D. So you have lights and shades. And for example, when you look at the hat, there is no shade at all. All you can see in this painting is very clear black counter lines. Because when Da Vinci actually starting to paint the portraiture and using the portraiture as a theory, he was mentioning that on human body, there's no line. So human body is round, so you have to have spaces. But for Chinese portraiture, our tradition, we don't actually you know, create spaces during we paint the portraits. We only use lines instead of using lights and shade. Portraits of people's ancestors were commonly used for family rituals in ancient China. Properly honoring the spirit of their ancestors could bring them health, prosperity, and longevity. Chinese believe that a relationship continues between the deceased and the living. This is a very well-preserved painting, and also all the details, all the patterns of the clothes, and specifically, this lady is definitely from a royalty herself, because you can see the dragons here. Because common people are not allowed to have dragons. Even from the you know, politicians, even prime minister by, by then, do not allow to have dragons. Only the royal families can have. Exhibitions featuring Ming and Qing dynasty portraits have garnered public interest in recent years. In the summer of 2022, the National Museum of China presented 50 portrait paintings from its collection. Now, take a look at this painting. Do you notice anything familiar? Right, the use of light and shading. Isn't it a fascinating crossover between East and West? So to learn more about the integration of Western painting techniques in Chinese portraits, I'm meeting with an art enthusiast. Xie explains that traditional Chinese portraiture took a great leap forward during the Ming and Qing dynasties. European missionaries who served as artists in the imperial court worked together with Chinese painters. They exchanged ideas and explored new painting styles that assimilated the best of both worlds. One of the perks of living in Beijing and working in my industry is that you get to go to exclusive events like the one we're about to head to next. At the China Millennium Monument, we're waiting for the unboxing of a portrait painting by Vincent van Gogh. So inside that box yeah. is the mostly anticipated painting yes, yes. by van Gogh. Yeah. Because so far, not many van Gogh's paintings actually travel to Beijing and especially portraits. Here we go. That's it. This is it, the gardener, and some people call it as a, a provincial peasant. This portrait of a smiling man in brightly colored clothes known as the gardener was painted by Vincent van Gogh during his stay at an asylum in Saint-Rémy-de-Provence. I'm curious why the simple life of peasants made its way into many of Van Gogh's paintings during this period. Van Gogh has been influenced by the 19th century realism. For example, the French painter Francois Millet, and he is specialized on painting farmers because at that time they were against uh, with academies because academies are, you know, they prefer the historical painting, mythological painting, but for academic rejects like Francois Millet and uh, Gustave Courbet, 
those realist painters are prefer to capture the real, uh, ordinary life, because Van Gogh was hugely influenced by Millet. During this period, he actually copied a lot of paintings by Millet. And his idea is also to capture the real essence of life, not only about social status, because the, his focus, because he came from ordinary background. For example, you look at Van Gogh's shirts, you can see all the strong colors, bright colors in combination together. So light up an uh, uh, ordinary gardener, which he had no social status, he just uh, ordinary people. But because of all the brushwork, you can see Van Gogh's brushwork is very strong, very intense, and very passionate about, how to say, to portray uh, ordinary people. So I think that's the most interesting and most touching elements about Van Gogh's painting. While we had the gallery all to ourselves for this exclusive viewing, the sight of a mesmerizing lady caught our attention. By 19th century, the photography has been very getting more and more popular. So you can get a very, you know, a serious and official photo from the camera. So why you have to ask a portrait painter to paint a similar one? They prefer to ask the portrait painter to paint something different. So Bodini actually provide the something different because Bodini himself is a very close friend with Edward Manet and uh, Edward Degas. So he's familiar with how the Impressionism, how to paint. So he combined the technique all together to create a unique portraiture now from Western portraits, let's return to Chinese self-portraits. In the history of Chinese art, however, scholarly painters were quite shy when it came to selfies. They preferred to manifest themselves through calligraphy or landscape art. Self-portraits, however, were not entirely absent. The 73-year-old quirky-looking man is the eccentric Qing Dynasty artist Jing Nong, a penetrating gaze, hands collapse above the waist, contemplative yet ready to fight. This robust young man is Ren Xiong. As China ushered in the 20th century, trends in modern Western art inspired many Chinese masters, and it showed in their self-portraits. Now this artist is from a whole new generation compared to his predecessors. He's a contemporary artist by definition, but paints self-portraits on the side as one of his long-term projects. Yeah,是免费的 这画的真的是一个眼睛，这画的真的是一个嘴。那么反经验绘画，呃，它可能会用另一个角度来看待我们眼中的一切，它可能是红色，一些黄色，一些黑色而已，类似迷彩图案的那些色斑，用这种角度
When we put those differences aside, portrait paintings offers us a visual account of how artists see themselves and others in their works and how the human consciousness develops over time. Lin Lin, CGTN.